Okay, here you see this, uh, uh, this bird, the swiftlet, and it was named the Aerodramus fusifagus. The moment it leaves the cave or the birdhouse, it would be flying, you know, and it wouldn't rest. The bird nest that is uh, built initially is white in color. And then the strands, you know, would have uh, feathers embedded in between. It's like building a house, you know. We call it a composite material. And when you want to consume your bird nest, you don't want the feathers in there. So that's a very tedious process, you know, to pick the feathers out of the bird nest. And that feather is glued to the strands. That's why it makes it even harder. Now, the material of edible bird's nest is largely made of protein and carbohydrate. Okay, so I will tell you a little bit about the protein. And then protein is a polymer. A polymer is built up of smaller molecules. In the case of protein, it is built up of amino acids. Okay, and then there are also carbohydrates, uh, also a polymer. But it is built up of different types of molecules. We call it sugars or saccharides. Okay. So they are polymers. So what is science? This is a statement given by a very famous uh, physicist, a Nobel Prize winner. And he says, if it disagrees with experiment, then the theory or hypothesis is wrong. Huh? That is the simplest statement for science. Huh? And then in science, the theories and hypothesis can never be proved. It can only be disproved. So if you make a hypothesis, you do an experiment. Okay? If the experiment says that the hypothesis is correct, it's still a question mark. But if the experiment says the hypothesis is wrong, it's definitely wrong. The most important statement that you can make is the atomic theory of John Dalton, that matter is made up of atoms and molecules. And atoms go to make up the molecules. But they are always in motion. You know, they are vibrating, they are rotating. Okay? And today, in science, we have instruments that would check their vibrations. And from there, we can identify what molecules they are. So I use some of that instrument to study the molecules in bird's nest. There are two possibilities for a myth. One is that it is a traditional story or legend uh, about gods and goddesses. That one is beyond the reach of science. Uh, I can't set up an experiment to test hypotheses on those. But the other kind of myth is a widely held but false belief or idea that can be tested by experimentation. Then science can shed some light on it. We call some of this myth deceived wisdom. Mystery is something that is difficult or impossible to understand or explain a puzzle or unsolved problem or we don't have the answer as yet. So in bird nest, we have both myth where it's easy to tackle with simple experiment and then there are also mysteries because it's actually quite a complex molecule. Uh, there are actually two kinds of swiftlets that build uh, bird nest that is edible. Huh? One, we call it Aerodramus fusifagus, and they built the uh, white nest. And the other one is uh, Aerodramus maximus. They built the black nest. Down here, the white nest has got less feather. The other black nest is full of feathers. They are largely confined to Southeast Asia. It's a Southeast Asian bird. Hmm? And a lot of them actually started out in uh, Indonesia. And then because of the forest fires, they started migrating north. The bird nest uh, in the market is actually coming from man-made concrete swiftlet bird houses. And you can see some of them uh, on the highway, you know, if you travel up to Malaysia. And in the whole of Malaysia, there are about 20,000 bird houses. And if estimate uh, those in Indonesia and Malaysia combined, it's about 200,000. Uh, Indonesia produces about 90% of the world market for bird nest. So the end result is that, you know, you're going to make bird nest soup. 
right? It is highly desired by both ladies and gentlemen because it's believed to have aphrodisiac and medicinal qualities. And it can restore your health. It's a restorative medicine. These are all beliefs, you know? So we call bird nest a nutraceutical or functional food. Now, the first legend. This is the one well known to the Chinese. Emerald Tsenghe and bird's nest. Maybe his sailors had not tasted, so when he came to Southeast Asia, maybe somewhere in uh, Borneo or places like this, so he saw those bird nests on the cliff. Naturally, he would tell the sailors, go and collect. Huh? Okay? So they took some of the legend says that they took some of the bird nests and then their health uh, improved tremendously. <laughs> the other uh, Myth that we hear a lot about is bird's nest is built with swiftlet's saliva. Whenever we talk about saliva, we use the human saliva as a basis for comparison. Huh? But we are mammals. The bird is an avian species. And what is the composition of human saliva? 99.5% is water. Huh? And then only tiny amounts of electrolytes, mucus, antibacterial compounds are epidermal growth factor. This one is of interest to the ladies. Uh. Uh, this one is a protein. Uh. And then various enzymes uh, like uh, thialine or amylase and various types of cells. It moistens the mouth, lubricates ingested food and begins the breakdown of starches by amylase. Because we humans, we chew. You know? Okay? So we need uh, this kind of saliva. So birds... Huh? They don't chew their food. The salivary gland only have mucus secreting cells. And during the mating season, huh, the salivary gland expands you know, to produce a lot of mucus. And they come out from this uh, opening onto the tongue itself so that it can then spit out to form the bird nest strand. Huh? So the bird nest strand is largely mucus okay this is the composition of swiftless secretion water about 10 percent huh? and then uh, mucus is about 85 percent now there's also a 77 kilo dalton protein similar to this uh, protein in eggs and this can cause allergic reaction so most of us are not allergic to it but there are and it can be life-threatening especially for young children huh? So if you find that you have rashes and things like that, when you're taking bird nest, skip it. Now, the other question, uh, some of those uh, companies that are selling bird nest will tell you that, oh, bird nest is highly nutritious. The first PhD thesis on Chinese edible bird nest was published in 1918 by a female uh, Chinese doing her PhD at the University of Chicago. She says that uh, the... Bird nest strands is made of a substance we call a glycoprotein. It's a combination of protein and carbohydrates. Its composition resembles that of the salivary mucin, the tiny amount that is present in human saliva. By doing feeding experiments on rats, she found that the protein is of inferior quality, which means that if you take nothing but bird's nest, you know, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you won't survive. Huh? There's something missing in there, okay? That you have to get from other foods. Now, if you look at the essential amino acids in edible bird's nest, you find that tryptophan is missing. This is an essential amino acid that you may get from vegetables and from meat. And then tryptophan, we know that is a precursor for serotonin, melatonin, and vitamin B3. Huh? Uh, serotonin makes you feel happy. Huh? And then melatonin uh, regulates your sleep cycle. <coughs> okay? And the vitamin B3 is for your central nervous system. So tryptophan is a very important, essential amino acid. Huh? It's not made by your body. Now, the other uh, myth uh, that has been around is uh, red burst nest is better than white burst nest. I will say better avoid. I will show you why you should avoid. Huh? <laughs> In fact, the red bird's nest is inferior to white bird's nest. Uh, you, if you fumigate the white bird's nest with uh, nitrous acid, nitrous acid is very easy to generate uh, in the laboratory, 
Then you find that the white bird's nest slowly changes to red, from white to red. Huh? And then we look at the protein, you know, because we are supposed to think at the molecular level. And then we look through the list. Oh, it has got the tyrosine in there on the protein backbone. One in every 10 amino acid is a tyrosine. Actually, tyrosine is very important. Huh? Uh, tyrosine is very uh, reactive to nitrogen species. And where does the nitrogen, reactive nitrogen species come from? It's actually vapor from the bird feces in those bird houses with red bird's nest, you know? China banned uh, sale of bird nest in 2011. Why? Because they discovered that the red bird nest has a lot of nitrite and nitrate. Even the white one would have some nitrite and nitrate. Huh? Because they never clean the bird houses. And you don't clean the bird houses, why? Because the bird doesn't want it to be clean. Too clean is no good for the bird. But just looking at the environment that it is staying in, huh? it must be protecting the eyes as well. Huh? Must be the glycoprotein doing some wonders. Huh? So the belief that it's good for the skin, maybe some truth to it. So in bird's nest, we have about 10.8% of sialic acid. About 10%. Sialic acid turns out to be very important for us humans as well. Huh? It is present in very high concentration in our brain. Huh? Uh, very important for brain development and cognition. Huh? And there are many more uh, applications of sialic acid that we don't know about. The research is still ongoing. Huh? It is what some biochemists call a miracle medicine, uh, potential miracle medicine. So, Emerald Cheng He sailors regain energy after eating bird's nest. Maybe, because the energy could be coming from the sugar that he put in there or from the chicken soup. And then bird's nest is built with swiftlet saliva, not like our human saliva, it's really a mucus, uh, full of uh, glycoprotein. And bird nest is highly nutritious, uh, no, uh, missing tryptophan. Uh, and then red bird's nest is the best, nah, forget it. Any colored bird nest means that it has absorbed something from the environment. So anecdotal evidence, bird's nest is good supplement for pregnant women and growing children. The jury is out on this, but I believe that it's due to sialic acid. Uh, promotes overall immunity and prevents cold and flu, I uh, don't know, no evidence. Uh, Helps relieve respiratory ailment, maybe. Because as you said, the bird swiftlet lives in a very harsh environment. So there must be something that is protecting the lungs of the nestling. Bird nest is a beauty food, good for the skin. Again, also because of, you know, the environment that the bird lives in. The skin is exposed, right, to the harsh environment. And yet it survives.